Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown Review. Man, SmackDown fucking sucked tonight. This show was absolutely terrible outside of one match that we saw tonight. So, we saw Big E and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Corbin and Apollo Crews. A rematch. Another rematch. We saw Otis versus Angelo Dawkins. And we had the last man standing match, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. The winner uh, gets to qualify for Money in the Bank. And we had a return tonight, which I was like, really? Really? Which I'll get to explain that because I have a little to say about this certain uh, someone's return. Overall, SmackDown fucking sucked. Roman Reigns was not on the show, which I am fine with. He was not on the show tonight. He doesn't need to be on the show every single week. I mean, he's the tribal chief. He's the universal champion. He doesn't need to be on the show every single week. Uh, to, to me, uh, tonight's SmackDown, you know, with Roman Reigns not being there, which... Like I said, he doesn't need to be on the show every single week. This show felt like a Monday Night Raw on a Friday night. It really did. Call it Monday Night Raw light. So, but let's get on with the review. So SmackDown opened up tonight with Edge. Edge ended up coming out. He got into the ring, he got on the mic, and he ended up saying about how WrestleMania was supposed to be the culmination of a 10-year story. Edge wanted to say that he envisioned so much and just knew it would happen, but then it didn't. He wanted to say that he didn't see that coming and that it wasn't in his plans. He wanted to say that the loss ended up rocking him. So, with that loss, he took some time off. He didn't want to say that he started to roll the match back in his brain. And that he even watched it. Which, Edge ended up saying that he never uh, rewatches uh, his match. Edge wants to say that Roman Reigns likes to gloss over a lot of points from that match. Edge went on about how some of Daniel Bryan's antics in that match prevented him from win the Universal Championship. And he also said that he could complain about that or the interference from Jey Uso or other things. And he'd be justified in complaining. You know what I'm saying? Well, back then, he would have complained. The edge that he is now has to understand that there will always be excuses and also obstacles. So Edge wants to say that he spent his entire career knocking down those obstacles. Or he wouldn't be here right now. He ended up saying that he does not stop. So Edge wants to say that he knows that he can beat Roman Reigns. And he even said more importantly, Reigns end up knowing that Edge can beat him. Edge wants to say that they both felt it. And he knows Reigns will never admit that. But he has the proof. He has some proof. So we saw uh, stills of Edge applying the cross face because uh, at WrestleMania he used uh, the cross face with the bar that Edge applied to Roman. So we saw a still of that. Edge ended up saying about how he lives in Roman's head rent free for life. He also wanted to say that when his music hit last week and Roman ended up hearing it, he knew that Reigns knew deep down. So Edge ended up saying that he's going to beat Roman and it's just a matter of when. He ended up saying that it is inevitable that he will become the Universal Champion. So Edge ended up getting out of the ring. He ended up heading to the back. And that was how 
the segment ended. But Edge, you know, wanted to come for uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, we're going to get the match at Money in the Bank. And I know Seth Rollins is going to uh, interfere in that match. So we're going to get uh, Rollins versus Edge at SummerSlam. And then the uh, rumored uh, Roman Reigns versus John Cena at SummerSlam. If WWE can actually uh, get John Cena because, you know, John Cena's uh, schedule, you know, with Hollywood, you know, he's a busy guy. So who knows if John Cena is going to be back for SummerSlam. It's rumored and Roman Reigns' uh, opponent at SummerSlam Possibly going to be John Cena, if they could get him. So, but overall, it was a okay uh, segment to open SmackDown with Edge. So then we saw Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was backstage. Jimmy Uso ended up walking in. He, and he started ranting to Paul Heyman about what Edge was saying about Roman. Jimmy ended up telling Paul Heyman that he couldn't believe that Edge had to say all that. Jimmy ended up saying that he's going to tell Edge what he told him last week. That they are family and that he got Roman's back like Roman has his. Jimmy ended up saying that when Reigns gets here, they are going to put Edge down and stab the family flag in his heart. So Paul Heyman didn't even say anything. He just had his arms crossed. And he was just staring at Jimmy Uso. And that was how the segment ended. So, but Jimmy Uso saying, oh, when Roman gets here, Roman wasn't on the show tonight. So, and then we went uh, to the stage and we saw Rick Boogs with his guitar, and he was uh, given an introduction to Shinsuke Nakamura, which they are now calling him King Nakamura, and Boogs ended up saying that he came to party with the one true king of WWE, and he started performing Nakamura's entrance, of course we have Pat McAfee end up rocking out, like always, you know, I like when uh, Pat McAfee uh, when he rocks out to uh, Boogs and when Nakamura comes out. I think it's just very uh, funny that he's so into it. And Pat McAfee, you know, he brings a little uh, energy uh, to the show on uh, commentary. You know, he knows uh, the business and he, it, he just does uh, really uh, good on commentary here. But I always love seeing Pat McAfee rock out to uh, Nakamura's theme with Rick Boogs, uh, you know, performing it. So then we had Big E end up coming out next. So he got into the ring. SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Apollo Crews end up coming into the ring along with Commander Aziz. And then... Baron Corbin, so we had uh, the tag team match, Nakamura and Big E versus Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews. Match was meh, in my opinion. It was a rematch. Once again, we see Apollo Crews and Big E and Corbin and Nakamura. What is any difference with these guys other than it being a tag team match? We've seen Big E and Apollo Crews how many times already? And Nakamura and Corbin, it's the same shit. But the only difference is it's a tag team match. So the match started off with Apollo Crews and Nakamura going at it. Nakamura ended up leveling Apollo Crews, end up nailing a running elbow to Crews into the corner. Nakamura ended up placing Apollo Crews on the top turnbuckle and delivered a high knee uh, to Apollo Crews. Biggie ended up coming in. Started stomping away while Apollo Crews was down in the corner. And Biggie did a abdominal stretch. 
Big Ann up slamming Apollo Crews, went for the cover, which Crews ended up kicking out at two. Crews then tagged in Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin was uh, unloading on Big E. And SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back, we saw Corbin was in control of the match. He kept control on Big E. So we saw later on Rick Boobs end up appearing on the stage. And he was reading off a license plate number. And he announced that someone's car is being towed. So the camera ends up showing a uh, Mercedes uh, truck on the screen. And it's being loaded on a flatbed, on a flatbed truck. And it's being repossessed. It's being towed. Now we find out that this is Corbin's truck. So Corbin was not happy about that. And because of that distraction, Biggie ended up uh, dropping Corbin with the big end in. So there you go. Biggie and Nakamura ended up winning the match. Post match, Biggie and Nakamura end up celebrating. Corbin ends up uh, sitting in the ring, very sad. He was distraught. And that was that. But overall, this match was just meh, in my opinion. We've seen Biggie. Nakamura, Apollo Crews, and Corbin. You know, we've all seen them, you know, in the ring. Like I said, Nakamura and Corbin, how many times? Big E and Apollo Crews, how many times? Nothing, nothing new other than it being a tag team match. Then we had Bailey end up coming out. Bailey came out, she was wearing a very nice uh, striped black and white shirt. She ended up Again in the ring, and she was in there for a face-off with Bianca Belair. Bailey started ranting about Bianca's recent win being a fluke, and she ended up saying that we all know Bianca is physically strong, but she is also mentally weak. Bailey went on and said Bianca is clearly crumbling at our expectations, and that she needs to get her head in the game before she falls apart in front of the fans. When you know the fans come back in two weeks. So out came Bianca Belair. Bianca was wearing a uh, nice uh, you know yellow dress. So she ended up saying that Bailey needs a crack in her mouth because she has what Bailey wants and that is the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bianca ended up going on about how Bailey keeps coming for her, like she's obsessed. So Bianca ended up saying that there's only one way to end this, for her to embarrass Bailey to the point of no return. So Bianca ended up offering to put the title on the line at Money in the Bank in an I Quit match. So Bailey was laughing at the idea of Bianca making her quit. So Bailey was like, oh, I'd probably quit SmackDown or quit WWE. Or hell, I could quit competing altogether. So Bailey ended up going on about Bianca not being the champion she betrays. And she wants to say that Bianca has no chance to win. So Bailey then accepts the challenge. So Bianca was shown laughing at Bailey, and Bailey was like, what the hell is so funny? So Bianca realized how excited she was to hear the words, I quit. So they end up staring at each other, and that was how the segment ended. So we're going to get that in Money in the Bank. Bianca versus Bailey, SmackDown Women's Championship, I quit match. There you go. But this is the same promo that we've been getting for like, what, three weeks? It's the same. Bailey ends up coming out, talking about Bianca Belair, laughing. Bianca comes out, talks shit about Bailey. She ends up laughing. I'm like, this whole feud, I said this before, this whole feud is based 
on laughing. That's what I feel like. Bailey laughs. Bianca laughs at Bailey. Same shit. So then we have Paul Heyman backstage. Paul Heyman was shown pacing around. And Jimmy Uso ended up walking up to him. Jimmy asked uh, Paul Heyman if Roman is still here. Jimmy ended up telling Paul Heyman to let Reigns know that Edge is still waiting for him. And that he's ready to jump on Edge. So Jimmy was wondering what Reigns is waiting for. And then it dawns on him. He kept saying that Reigns is waiting for Jimmy to act first. So Jimmy ended up telling Paul Heyman that he will approach Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville so that they can save some time for him at the end of the show for him to call Edge out. So Jimmy ended up walking off and that was that. And now we had Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. In a last man standing match, this was a, a qualifying match for Money in the Bank. And this was a good match. This was probably the best match of the night. This will possibly be match of the year candidate and the best match on SmackDown this year. This was absolutely an entertaining match between these two. You know, like I said, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, every time when they have a match, it is just good. They work really well together. So we had the match start off with Kevin Owens ended up tackling Sami Zayn in the corner, started unloading on him. Owens was stomping away at Sami Zayn, and he delivered a uh, cannonball to Sami Zayn in the corner. Sami then falled out to the floor. Referee was shown counting. So Kevin Owens ended up following on the floor. He started beating Sami Zayn up some more. Owens was delivering a few shots to Sami Zayn into the barricade. So the referee was counting again. Owens ended up leveling Sami Zayn with a forearm. So Sami Zayn ended up countering. He ended up whipping Kevin Owens into the barricade. Kevin Owens ended up uh, dumping Sami Zayn over the barricade. And Sami Zayn ended up slamming Kevin Owens headfirst into the Thunderdome LED boards. So Kevin Owens then reversed it. And he did the same thing to Kevin to uh, Sami Zayn a few times. Kevin Owens then ended up dropping Sami Zayn at ringside, and he delivered a senton. So Kevin Owens then ended up slamming Sami Zayn on top of the announce table. Kevin Owens went on top of the barricade, and Sami Zayn then grabbed Kevin Owens, and he ended up slamming Owens hard on top of the announce table. And the table did not break. So Owens ended up bouncing off of the table and he fell to the floor. So Sami Zayn was shown taking the breather. He was sitting down at the uh, chair at the announce table. Sami Zayn ended up walking over to uh, Kevin Owens to, to attack him. And SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Kevin Owens took control of the match. He started unloading on Sami Zayn in the corner with uh, headbutts. So Sami Zayn was down. He was dazed. He made it back up as the referee ended up counting the five. So Kevin Owens ended up uh, working on Sami Zayn. He uh, kept on working on, working on him, trying to keep him uh, down. Kevin Owens then uh, pummeled uh, Sami Zayn some more, ended up dropping him with some left and rights, delivered a chop. So there was a point where uh, Owens ended up taking Sami Zayn to the top turnbuckle, and he was going to put him through two tables uh, that were on the floor because Kevin Owens ended up pulling two tables from underneath the ring, set them up, and we had uh, Kevin Owens... Ended up uh, gasping for air around ringside. And Sami Zayn ended up running the ropes. Ended up nailing a suicide dive to Kevin Owens. And there was a point in the match where Kevin Owens ended up uh, climbing up to the top. And Sami Zayn also uh, was at the top. 
And Sami Zayn then end up knocking Kevin Owens from the top turnbuckle. And Kevin Owens end up crashing through both of the tables that were set up at ringside. And the tables were stacked up on top of each other. So Sami Zayn end up uh, knocking Kevin Owens from the top turnbuckle. And Kevin Owens crashed through both of the, uh, the tables. So it was a uh, big uh, bump uh, that Kevin Owens took through the tables. And how loud it was when he went through uh, both of the tables. So Kevin Owens did make his way back up as the referee ended up counting to nine. Sami Zayn uh, couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that Kevin Owens ended up getting up from uh, that, from being uh, put through two tables. So at the end of the match, we had Kevin Owens end up grabbing uh, Sami Zayn. He ended up putting him through the announce table with a power bomb. And Kevin Owens was like, no, 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 no. He ended up uh, picking him up again. He ended up grabbing Sami Zayn, ended up putting him through the uh, other table near uh, the announce table with a power bomb. And then Kevin Owens ended up dragging Sami Zayn by his beard. He grabbed Sami Zayn by his beard to the edge of the apron. Kevin Owens then delivered another power bomb to Sami Zayn on the ring apron. So Sami Zayn was laid out uh, from that. So Sammy's, so Kevin Owens was waiting as the referee was counting. So the referee ended up counting to 10. Sami Zayn was unable to get back up. So Kevin Owens ended up winning the last man standing match. So now Kevin Owens earns a spot in Money in the Bank. So post-match... Kevin Owens ended up coming into the ring, ended up standing under the Money in the Bank briefcases that were hanging on top. So, that was that. We saw Sami Zayn trying to recover. He was very dazed. That was that. But overall, this was a very good match. This was very entertaining. This might be match of the year candidate and the best match on SmackDown for this year. Really enjoyed this match. And then we saw Megan Moran. Megan Moran ended up stopping Edge backstage. And she was asking Edge about Jimmy Uso calling him out later on tonight. So Edge ended up talking about how he knows he's walking into a trap. And that Roman will be nearby waiting. Edge ended up saying that he doesn't care and that he's tired of Roman and he's tired of their family and tired of all the excuses. So Edge ended up saying that if they wanted to set this trap, that's fine because they're going to get an angry, vindictive son of a bitch. So Edge ended up walking off and that was that. Uh, now we have Sonya Deville, and this is where I'm going to get to the ranting uh, with this segment here. So Sonya Deville was in the ring. She ended up saying that it's her pleasure to announce the next entrant into the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. So she ended up announcing Carmella last week. Carmella is going to be in the Women's Money in the Bank. She didn't even, she didn't even uh, win a match. She just was like, WWE is just like, oh yeah, let's put Carmella in. She don't have to uh, compete or qualify for uh, Money in the Bank. She don't have to compete in the match. Let's just throw her in the match just like that. And WWE did it again tonight. They did the same thing. Oh, Carmella gets a free pass, and now this one is going to get a free pass. Let's not have her compete. Let's just put her right in the match. So Sonya Deville ended up announcing the new the entrant into the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. The next one. And guess who it was? Zelina Vega. Yes, Zelina Vega made her return tonight on SmackDown. Unbelievable. So Zelina Vega ended up saying hi to Sonya Deville and says... It's nice to see her. 
Zelina Vega ended up saying that it's Sonia's pleasure to announce her return, as it will be her pleasure to capture the Money in the Bank briefcase. So she ended up going on about how she will wait until the chosen women's champion is beaten and down. And she will cash it in and fulfill her destiny of becoming either the NXT Raw or SmackDown Women's Champion. So then out came Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up saying that she's still upset about Carmella being put into the Money in Bank ladder match. When she feels like she deserves a spot in Money in the Bank. Which I agree. I think Liv Morgan should deserve a spot in Money in the Bank. This woman deserves better. So she was like, oh, first Carmella is being put into the Money in the Bank ladder match, and now Zelina Vega is given an opportunity just like that. So Liv Morgan ended up going on about how Zelina Vega doesn't deserve to be in the match. And as she hasn't compete she hasn't even competed on SmackDown all year. Well, hello. She was released. Zelina Vega was released. So Zelina Vega ended up saying that she's competed in rings like this one for years. And that she is one of the most popular superstars in history. Uh, she was popular because thanks to Andrade, who is no longer with the company, and he is now in AEW. He's going to have a successful career there. Zelina Vega was popular just because of her being a manager to Andrade. And you can't forget Angel Garza. She ended up saying that she can run circles around Liv, embarrassing her, and showing what an amateur Liv Morgan is. So Liv Morgan then smacked Zelina Vega, and she ended up telling her to prove it. So Liv Morgan ended up asking Sonya Deville if she can prove it in a match. So just like last week with Carmella, we had Liv Morgan compete in a match with Zelina Vega here. Show, Liv Morgan showing Sonya Deville that she can prove that she could be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. That And that was that, but... Zelina Vega ended up returning. I lost so much respect for Zelina Vega. Why? Because she ended up going on before her WWE release. She was like, oh, these superstars should have unionization. These superstars should do uh, something else outside of WWE, whether it be Twitch streaming. And so they WWE, I heard they want Zelina Vega to close her Twitch account. So she was like, no, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue streaming. So WWE ended up, not liking that, released Zelina Vega. So they released Alistair Black because of budget cuts. And so Alistair Black gets released, but Zelina Vega comes back. So you release her husband, and yet you rehire her. Without her husband coming back. This was, this is WWE having a desperate attempt to bring Zelina Vega back in. Just so they, they could have Alistair Black come back. And you know what? Alistair Black, there's a report that came out tonight that Alistair Black was on uh, Zelina Vega's uh, stream. Her Twitch stream. Saying that he is no longer coming back to WWE. Good. Good. Go to AEW. You'll be treated fairly right then and there, over there. Zelina Vega is a sellout. You all think she's going to win money in the bank? You all really think she's going to win money in the bank? She's not going to win money in the bank. Man. She comes back tonight. Look at this. She is going to be buried. Her return is a failure already for what we saw tonight. And at this point, I don't care for anything that Selena Vega is going to do after her return tonight. I have zero expectations. Zero expectations in Selena Vega. So we went to Liv Morgan versus Selena Vega. This match sucked. Carmella was watching the match from backstage. 
Zelina Vega was uh, charging at Liv Morgan. She took Liv Morgan down for a two count. Zelina Vega ended up taking Liv Morgan into the corner, started uh, working on her. So Zelina Vega was trying to use a handful of tights on Liv Morgan, but the referee ended up catching her. And Zelina Vega was yelling at the referee. So Liv Morgan then took advantage of the distraction and she rolled up Zelina Vega. And Liv Morgan was using uh, a handful of tights on Zelina Vega. So with that, Liv Morgan ended up winning the match. So Liv Morgan proven in two weeks that she deserves a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. She beat Carmella last week, and she beats Lena Vega tonight. And with Lena Vega already losing this match tonight, it is it'll tell you how WWE is going to treat Lena Vega, as you know she probably has more matches coming up. Lena Vega is right to where she last left off. Awful. Absolutely awful. Zelina Vega, she should have went to AEW and she could have been with uh, Alistair Black, her husband, in AEW. She could have managed Alistair Black when he comes, when he comes to AEW. That would have been perfect. But overall, this match was terrible. Zelina Vega is going to feel like every other woman in that horrible women's division. Absolutely awful. So then we had Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins ended up interrupting Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville backstage. Seth Rollins ended up reminding the both of them of his accomplishments. Rollins ended up saying that he's not happy about Edge getting a shot at the Universal Championship at Roman Reigns. So Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce end up defending their decision. So Sonya Deville end up telling Rollins that if he beats Cesaro next week, he will earn a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Great. We have to see another match against Seth Rollins and Cesaro. Rematch number one for next week's SmackDown. How many times have we seen Rollins and Cesaro? Now we had Owens versus Angelo Dawkins. This was a squash match. So... Otis ended up getting the win, delivered a Vader bomb to Angelo Dawkins. And that was that. Otis ended up winning. Otis ended up uh, having a new look to him. He shaved his head. So that was that. Overall, this was a squash match. So then we saw... Uh, a backstage segment with Rick Boogs. He was taunting uh, Corbin with some king jokes. Corbin ended up uh, knocking uh, Boogs for making fun of people. And Corbin was like, oh, that's not funny. So Corbin ended up telling Boogs to screw himself. And that was that. So now we saw Jimmy Uso and Paul Heyman backstage. Jimmy ended up telling Paul Heyman that Edge is asking for it tonight. So Jimmy was wondering where Roman is. Paul Heyman ended up saying that Roman operates on his own time. But he does do for those who do for him. So Paul Heyman ended up telling Jimmy to be main event Jimmy. And go out there and do what you need to do. There you go. Roman doesn't need to be on the show Every single week. So Paul Heyman's right. Roman operates on his own time. So then we had Jimmy Uso. In the ring. Jimmy Uso ended up calling out Edge. Jimmy ended up saying that he doesn't need his brother Jay. Or anyone else. Because he can handle Edge all by himself. He wants to say that it seems like Edge isn't man enough. To step into the ring. And face off with him. So Jimmy was like, oh, this isn't a trap. It's just him calling out Edge. So Jimmy was like, 
to Edge, oh, let's do this. So Edge ended up coming out. Edge was on the mic, and he ended up asking Jimmy if he thinks he's smart, acting all tough, with Roman, his cousin, weighing in the wings. So Edge ended up going on about how Roman is using Jimmy and the rest of the family. So Edge ended up asking what happened to Jimmy and nobody's bitch. Because now Jimmy is just another one of Roman's bitch. So Edge ended up saying this is a pretty good trap. But not one for him. One for Jimmy. So Edge then marched to the ring. And Jimmy was uh, pacing. He was looking around. Jimmy ended up attacking Edge as Edge ended up entering the ring at the apron. Edge ended up fighting back. He ended up launching Jimmy into the ring post. Edge dropped Jimmy and he goes to take the uh, ring steps apart. And Jimmy ended up delivering a super kick to Edge. He then beat Edge up, brought him back into the ring. Jimmy was mounting Edge with some right hands in the middle of the ring. Edge ended up turning it back around. And Edge applied the cross face to Jimmy in the middle of the ring which he made Jimmy tap out. So Jimmy was shown gasping for air. Edge was waiting for Jimmy to get back up. So Edge then speared Jimmy. Edge ended up going out to ringside, and he ended up breaking a chair. He ended up grabbing the uh, bar uh, from the chair, just like what uh, Edge did at WrestleMania. So he bought... Uh, the bar into the ring. Edge ended up using uh, that bar and he pulled back and locked in the cross face again on uh, Jimmy, just like what Edge did to Roman at WrestleMania. So Jimmy ended up uh, yelling. He ended up tapping out. So Edge ended up breaking the hold. He ended up dropping the bar. Edge ended up, uh, you know, lifting up uh, Jimmy. He ended up addressing the camera. He ended up sending the message to Roman. So Edge ended up yelling, I don't stop at the camera. He was uh, sending that message to Roman. So now is how SmackDown went off the air tonight. But thought this was a uh, decent segment here. So lean up to uh, you know Edge and Roman at Money in the Bank. Overall, SmackDown was terrible tonight. Outside of uh, the last man standing match, everything else, uh, every other match uh, that was on here from the tag match to Otis uh, versus uh, Angel Dawkins and Liv Morgan and Zelina Vega, all that, terrible. The only uh, match that was good tonight was the last man standing match with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But overall, that's it for the SmackDown review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.